Karen. I thought I would bring you along as I create this piece in gouache. If you follow along with me on Patreon, you know that January is gouache month for me. Every month I try a new medium and that medium is decided by my Patreon crew. So if you're interested in telling me what to do, then head over to Patreon and become a patron and you'll get a say in what I do next. So back to this piece. When I am creating a piece in gouache, I like to do little swatches first to see which colors I'm interested in using. The lovely thing about this particular gouache, which is by Arteza, is it comes in such a huge range of colors that I don't even need to do any mixing, which for me is a foreign concept. I usually mix every single color that I ever use in paint, uh, watercolor, acrylics. So this has been quite a treat to sort of just work with paint right out of the tube. And the process that I use for creating these pieces is fairly simple and straightforward. I start with a silhouette that I like, um, and then I create a pattern within that silhouette that I believe fits well uh, with the shape of the silhouette. My exploration here is inner beauty. Um, it's not a super deep concept, but I think it lends itself beautifully to the simplicity of gouache and the graphic nature that you can achieve with gouache. Um, so what I'm exploring here is the concept that we are all made of so much more than uh, what you see on the outside. And uh, every one of us is uniquely beautiful on the inside. And we all have our various complexities. So here I am deciding to add just one more color. I felt like I needed one more sort of dark to medium tone. I like to create sort of a balance of dark, mid, and light tones in the piece to create visual interest. So let's dive right into the painting. I like to start with my darkest tone because it sort of sets the stage for the rest of the painting. Um, this is just when I'm working with gouache and often when I'm working with acrylics as well. With watercolors, you kind of have to work light to dark. Um, but for gouache, starting with the dark tones sort of gives you the lay of the land and also introduces the concept of contrast and you're able to quickly determine whether you're going to have enough contrast in your piece when you start with the darkest. But mostly for a really complex pattern for this, it was just for me to sort of get my bearings and understand where everything went and uh, how it all spoke to each other. So now that I've got all my darks laid in, it becomes a lot easier to start laying in my lighter tones. And um, I don't know if you caught that glimpse of the tube right there, but um, this is so easy to use right out of the tube that I really just sort of wet the tip of my paintbrush and swirl it at the very tip of the tube to pick up the right color and mix in just the right amount of water for these few brush strokes. And um, I don't even need a palette. That's how simple it is to create these little pieces with this particular gouache. Um, so I really enjoyed working with it. And um, the patterns I pick up from various inspiration. I do a lot of flipping through um, old magazines and books and art journals and things like that. And I um, will often sort of adapt patterns to um, what I'm painting. And this one, I believe, I was inspired by a pattern in my big Fiden pattern book, which if you don't know this book, it's a wonderful book full of patterns. 
It's unbelievable. It's a visual feast. Highly recommend it. So it's occurring to me as I record the audio for this video, um, I need to like come up with some good stories to tell while I voice over these process paintings, especially the ones that I slow down a bit. Um, I am speeding up parts of these just because this piece took me a little over an hour to make and I don't want an hour long video. Um, but. I figure maybe I sort of turn these into storytelling sessions. Um, so if you like that idea, uh, give me some ideas on what kind of stories you'd like to hear. Uh, really anything from my life to experiences to travels. Um, I'll talk about pretty much anything. So if you can think of anything you'd like to hear about, just sort of drop it in the comments below. And next time I record one of these, I will do a little story session as I talk about what I do. Ah, so we add the green. There's just something about adding the complementary color that really just solidifies the piece that you're making. It's like, I don't know, taking a really deep breath. It feels really good and it clarifies things. It's always my favorite moment when I add a color that just sort of pops and then makes the piece start to come alive and it starts to bring it together. So at this point, I am sort of approaching this intuitively. Um, I have my pattern sort of pre-planned and drawn out, but I haven't selected exactly where each color will go. This isn't sort of a paint by number situation for me. This is more intuitive and um, just guided by my sense of design. So you'll see a lot of pauses as I consider what color I should fill in in a certain spot and uh, and I make little adjustments as I go. Um, at this point, I'm realizing I need another sort of darker tone. So you'll see in a little bit, I start to add some darker colors. So here I am adding another darker tone. I, I started with the sort of darker, more muted green, and now I'm adding a sort of wine color. And I believe that this is really what makes the pattern sort of come together, the addition of this darker color. And then the last thing I'm gonna wanna do is sort of add a pop color. And I think you can see on my little grid on the side there that that pop color is going to be sort of this bright yellow and that just sort of will tie the entire thing together there's so many things you need to think about uh, when creating even just a tiny piece like this um, there's form and there's contrast and there's balance and color and um, all these considerations that you have to make in order to create a piece that feels whole and complete
And here I am just going to put the finishing touches on this piece. Uh, just fill in a few little gaps and holes and make little tiny adjustments to um, sort of bring more visual interest. And then this piece is ready to go. Um, this turned out to be, I think, my favorite of the few that I did. I think I completed three or four of these in total, and I'm probably going to create a few more for my original art gifts for my Patreon patrons. So uh, these were really fun, and I can see myself doing these on a larger scale in the future. I really like the sort of message that it speaks to and uh, the concept behind them. And also they just have a very sort of calming and meditative effect um, when filling these in. And pretty much every step of the process has been wonderful from choosing the silhouette to filling it in with the pattern. And then of course the painting and bringing it to life. So I really enjoyed this and I hope that you'll give this a try. I think um, it would be a really good exercise in design and color theory for anybody, any aspiring artists. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, I'm going to sort of let this wrap itself up. And um, I hope to produce more of these sort of combo, real-time, slightly sped up tutorial videos in the future. Enjoy! Enjoy!